so in uh, yesterday's lecture we moved on to some of the history of the wave optics and then we move forward it uh, like move forward to the and we saw i'm sorry and then we saw this one <laughs> the interference it's a mathematical uh, representation with the mathematical representation we saw some of the sums based on it today awesome thing is going to happen water wave according to the eugen's principle see whatever this thing is happening into the slit na whatever the thing that is happening into the slit the plane wave fronts are getting converted to the spherical one the conversion of the before moving on to the ydsc experiment it is uh, right important to understand how the wave fronts are getting converted or how the wave fronts are see whenever there is a presence of any kind of the obstacle okay the wave fronts changes their shape basically three kind of the wave fronts we have seen for the line sources we have seen the cylindrical wave front for the point sources we have seen the spherical wave front right for a ray we have seen the plane wave front the bunch of light bunch of rays here you can uh, analyze the plane wave fronts are getting converted into the spherical one Many students might be into the array, sir. This is the water, and we are about light. Blah blah blah, bluff master. So let's change this to sound, and then analyze the same thing is happening because I told you all into the previous lecture that sound is a as because of the bulk property of the matter. So that by it there is a possibility that two sound sources may get coherent. but for a light i told you all into the previous lecture that light can be two light sources can be can't coherent why for the two sources to be coherent it is compulsory that they should emit a same frequency right of a light with the same phase right with the same phase now what happens here okay what happens here if you want to make the light as a coherent for the high frequency stimulated emission is needed for the low frequencies small ac currents right are added into it for that reason we are considering the light as a wave and we are plotting up the phasor and everything this uh, was the reason that i told you into the previous lectures now sound bulk property of the matter same the plane wave fronts are coming now it has been converted into the spherical wave fronts my question is both of the sources are coherent suppose if i am taking the two sources also na this is a single slit okay here only the single slit we have taken a small slit we have taken suppose if we are taking up the two slits then let's check it out what happens right okay what happened in this if we are taking up the two slits again see first of all let's analyze with the single slit and that i'm going to see how the interference occurs and how the interference pattern is observed and what is all about the ydsc experiment if i'm talking about the single slit of single slit right of the water and light see again the plane wave fronts are coming from the light and they are getting converted into the spherical wave fronts the plane wave fronts are coming and they are getting right converted into the spherical wave fronts okay so here yeah. three the wave water wave yes plane are getting converted from the single slit sound let's take one slit plane are getting converted into it let's take the uh, uh, one slit light plane are getting converted into the the questions on this are also asked into an examination what kind of the instrument it is present here in between right so as of right uh, this plane wave fronts are getting the wave fronts are getting uh, changing the shape wave fronts are changing the shape so uh, practically speaking suppose suppose if we are replacing the single slit the single slit diffraction is also going to come but suppose if we are going to replace it by the two slits see 
now the two waves are getting and one see one one pattern is obtained here suppose if i am keeping the screen here see you can just check it out the screen Oh, now this would be an awesome term, huh? That is really an awesome term. See, just check it out. See, here interference pattern is getting obtained. See, slow. This is a bright fringe. Nearby the bright fringes, we are having some of the dark, right? See, now slowly, 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 the intensity is getting changed. This one is a central, right? The bright we got nearby bright, we are having the dark. Again nearby dark, we are having the bright. Again nearby bright, we are having the dark. And slowly, slowly, see, they are getting fade. Okay, this thing we need to analyze. The YDSE experiment is all about this stuff. To analyze the interference pattern, to analyze this interference pattern, right, Young's conducted an experiment that was Young's double slit experiment using the double slits and keeping the screen in front. Using the double slits and keeping the screen in front from one single source, he emitted a light and he allowed that light to cross from this two slits. So that this plane wavefronts may get converted into the spherical wavefronts, and those spherical wavefronts may get merged, they get interfere at the multiple points to get a pattern generated. That pattern needs to be analyzed. For that, screen was needed, screen was kept, and on that, this interference pattern was projected, and finally, we got this results. Intensity at the mid part is quite large while moving away from the central part, right? Intensity is getting and the light is getting fade out. I am moving aside, right? Okay, uh, again, I am going to start this experiment. Please note it down here. Amplitude is maximum. Again, I am going to start this experiment. Please note this down. Analyze it carefully. I am giving you all a some amount of the time. See, I am changing the frequency. I have selected the light blue color. Because the interference pattern is really awesome, visible in that. See, analyze. Okay, now slowly, slowly interference pattern obtained and the intensity got increased. And now it goes stable. While moving on from the center part to the about, right, things are getting changed. Okay, let's analyze this into the very slow. See. So, Young's double slit experiment is all about the interference phenomena. Young's double slit experiment is all about the interference phenomena. Interference phenomena, it means that yes sir, the interference phenomena we have seen into the previous lecture. Interference phenomena we have seen into the previous lecture. So, hope so, if you are not, uh, right, uh, some students might be like, uh, sir, we didn't understood. So, I for that, I must say, you must might have uh, paused this video and watch it again. Just refine it. Okay. So, this is the major part that we are going to discuss it. Why go and why I am moving on to slow? Because uh, this YDSE experiment from the JE and NEET point of view, it is having the highest possibilities. The first one that is uh, in NEET, that is the prominent role of the polarization, but still, right, this YDSE dominates, YDSE dominates. But from JE and JE advanced, definitely the YDSE is going to dominate. So, for that reason, we are going to see, this lecture is not going to be quite long, right, yes, but, 
maximum time of this lecture is going to cover up in understanding the logic behind the YDSE and its mathematical expression. Once it is done, sums are quite easy. Okay. So, uh, two contradictory things are going to happen in this lecture. The first one, the lecture is obviously not going to be quite long and apart from that, obviously the maximum part of the lecture we are going to understanding, we are going to consume in understanding the actual fundamental logic behind the YDSE experiment. So, that is the possibility that 20 to 25 minutes we can take right in understanding, just understanding the logic and after that immediately we can jump off to the conclusions, right, okay. So, first of all, in this experiment, the plane wave fronts are getting converted into the, right. So, it is important, okay, it is important to understand because without that, I don't think so, uh, any theory is about to come. So, 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 I am going to shut off my AC, okay. So, after approximately 11 minute of this lecture, the, for the 11th minute, the simulation went on, right. Hello, Acho. Sat Sri Akala, Namaste from my side. This is your own all the time favorite dialogue, your favorite educator, physics educator, Indrajit Singh, welcoming you all into the most sensible platform for an aspirants, those who are preparing for, right, all of those examination because we are expanding a lot and at the very high rate. The rate of the expansion, right, the rate of the revolution, the rate of the contribution of PW into the revolution, it is increasing exponentially, right, exponentially. Is it so? So, guys, what will be the agendas of the today's lecture? Why DSE experiment? Before moving on to the YDSE experiment, it is important to understand, right, the path difference, the phase difference and before that you have to understand, right, how things are going to happen and how the plane wavefronts are getting changed, how the wavefronts are changing its their shape, okay. Question on this are also coming up into an examination, right. I am going to take just one or two examples, not going to waste time on that. Suppose here, if I am going to take principal axis, right, okay. I am going to take one principal axis and I must say here, one surface is present. right, one surface is present here, okay. Now what happens, mark my words, now what happens, right. The plane wave fronts are going to come like this way, The light is propagating parallel to the principal axis. Those are the bunch of rays that are parallel right to the principal axis. The plane wavefronts are moving on to this way. Now suddenly what happens, right? The plane wavefronts got changed its shape, right, to the spherical wavefront. The plane wavefront changes its shape to the spherical wavefront. So the question states that Identify the surface in between. Identify the surface in between. That will be the quite important part. Now, many students might say, Sir, slate. Simulation. Slate. Yes, first time. Pijet, 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 Slate, Sar, Slate. Yes. Answering first time, very right. Today I feel like I am going to be the topper. After topper, I am going to be in the IITs. After IITs, one crore of package. God damn. 
I am going to have the revolution really after completing the IIT my first invention right it would be onto the wireless electricity sir I am going to invent that part we are going to transfer I will work on with the project with the team that we are going to transfer the electricity right in the wireless mode to the homes from the common tower I am going to cover up the experiment that the Tesla left sir physics slate this thing happens now accidentally fortunately or unfortunately whenever we answer okay one question into the physics and hope so not hope so when it comes up correct then we are saying Tesla and Newton Einstein okay this kind of things happens okay so here there is a presence of right the concave lens presence of the concave lens why the wavefronts are diverging they are not converging the plane wavefronts are there but they are diverging the shape of the wavefronts are getting increased obviously right they are getting fainted also right but the shapes of the wavefronts are getting increased okay the same thing if i want to represent into the ray diagram okay when we are consider as a bunch of rays the same thing happened like this way the rays were coming right okay like this way the rays were coming and after refraction this thing was going on right and as because of that see we were about to identify the focus point now we did it into the same manner so here the plane wavefronts are coming if i am considering the light as the wave this kind of the plane wavefronts are traveling okay suddenly due to the presence of the surface that is the concave lens right the presence of this plane wave of wavefronts got converted into the spherical and those spherical this is right those sphericals are also diverging they are not converging those spherical's are also diverging not converging okay so this is how things happen slate achcha chal ta na students are and those who answer slate right they are like achcha chal ta hu duao me yaad rakhna physics apne bas ka nahi hai itihas me yaad rakhna लिनियर मोमेंटम की बंदूकों से हमें थोड़ा परे रख राइट लाइट के वेव नेचर से हमें थोड़ा परे रखना ओके सो दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स हैपेंस राइट सो इन बिटवीन देयर इज अ सरफेस व्हाई आई कैप द क्वेश्चन इन फ्रंट इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द वाईडीएसी एक्सपेरिमेंट ओके नाउ सेकंड थिंग सपोज द सेम थिंग दैट इज गोइंग टू कम अप ऑन okay the plane wave fronts are there in between we are having one surface okay the plane wave fronts are there but in between we are having one surface where the wave fronts are getting like this way right okay now we immediately all will be having the thought into the mind we are having the surface this side we are having the plane wave fronts traveling okay plane wave fronts the light is always perpendicular to the wave front okay this is nothing else but the principal axis now it is easy to answer this question okay now it is easy to answer this question sir as because of the presence of convex lens right things are happening this is the convex lens this is the principal axis right from this side the wave fronts are coming like okay this way okay and after this they are getting diverged at the single point okay they are getting diverged at the single point so as of that reason this thing is going to come upon okay so how this diversion takes place this is the rays they are coming okay and they get diverged at the single point like this way 
that point is focus. So here this happens as because of the presence of the concave lens, as because of the presence of the concave lens, right. So if you have to just note this down, you can note this down, okay. Even you can note this previous one so that you can just stop this video. Come on everyone, give me a lot 10 seconds of it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, now, why it is important, right, to analyze this interference pattern, obviously, okay, it will give the more detail about this, uh, the nature of the light, right, and lots of things are there, but they are not going to come up right now, okay. Now, the most important dif is path difference between two waves they are getting interfered, okay. The three cases we are going to discuss, the three most important cases we are going to discuss. First of all, if I am talking about the Young's double slit experiment, then I must say the arrangement of the Young's double slit experiment states that, right, we are having the two slits, right, okay. The distance between the two slit is small d. At the distance between the slits and on the one side, screen is kept. The distance between the slits and the screen is capital D. This is a very common arrangement of the YDC experiment and this all are aware of. Okay, on the very opposite side, source is there. That source is having the capability to emit the waves. Right. Suppose if they are not emitting, okay, the source is emitting the plane, right. The source is emitting the plane wave friends, okay, of the same size, okay. The source is having the capability to emit the plane wave fronts. They are getting propagated in this direction, right. So at this slit, those plane wave front will get converted into the spherical wave front. Then we are going to see into the after. Okay, first of all, let's see what happens into the YDSE arrangement, and then we are going to see the three most important, right. Uh, stuff within it. YDSE arrangement, right? YDSE arrangement, simple, right? There are two slits, okay? D is the distance between two slits. Distance between two slits, right? On this side, one source is kept that is having the capacity to right emit the waves. Okay, it is difficult to create a two current uh, to create a current sources. So as of that reason, they have kept one source, and from this this point will act like a secondary source and is having the capability to emit the waves. Right. So indirectly, we have grab like this way. Okay. Now. Here, definitely one thing is going to happen, right, we are going to have the interference pattern. But to analyze that interference pattern, we need one screen, right. So, in between slit and the screen, the distance is taken as capital D, okay. So, if I am writing down D, distance between two slits, capital D, Distance between slit and screen. Okay. Distance between slit and screen. Now, what happens? See, what actual thing is going on, mark my words, from the left side, okay, the waves are coming. The plane wave fronts are coming like this way. The plane wave fronts are coming like this way, right? Now, from this two slits, this plane wave fronts are getting converted into the spherical wave front, right? This plane wave fronts are getting converted into the spherical wave fronts like this way. Right? The same thing is happening here. Yeah, the plane wave fronts are getting converted into the spherical wave front. Okay, the plane wave fronts are getting converted 
right into the spherical wave front and as as of that reason right okay as of that reason okay as of that reason one interference pattern is observed right one interference pattern is observed okay interference pattern is observed right the two waves are getting interfered this are the point of interferences this are the point of interferences see this are the point of interferences i heartily apologize i can understand right the diagrams are quite okay uh, randomly drawn but these are the points okay where interference thing is going on and this interference pattern projects on the screen right and we are going to have some results okay we are going to have some results now basically everything depends on small d and capital d everything depends on small d and capital d and the respective path difference see for the interference it is important right to waves should have constant phase difference the two waves should have the constant phase difference okay two sh waves should have the constant phase difference <coughs> 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 Two waves should have the constant phase difference. It is important. Okay. Now what happens here? Okay. See, mark my words. Okay. Suppose this is a slit one. This is a slit two, and they are going to interfere at this specific point P. P is the point of the interference. Now what happens? This is the path of the one. the first wave that is traveling towards the point p this is the path of the second wave that is traveling towards the point p right can i say that okay this is the path of the first wave that is traveling towards the point p this is the path of the second wave that is traveling towards the point p okay if the frequency is kept constant in between this two slits right so it means that for the interference there should be the constant phase difference it means there exists a path difference for that if the phase difference is getting change or if we are having the constant phase difference then again to against the constant phase difference we are having the constant path difference then and then there is a possibility that this two slides may get interfered at the specific point <coughs> suppose this is a distance between the two slits suppose if i am dropping out the perpendicular and considering this as the theta can i say this will be the d sin theta dropping out the perpendicular it means that this two lines are same an extra distance into the second will be the actual path difference between the two waves so here can i say x2 minus x1 that is is equal to delta x that is is equal to the path difference right so that path difference is nothing else but what d sin of theta okay so delta x that is is equal to d sin of theta okay according to the condition of the interference one new equation is going to come delta phi that is is equal to 2 pi by lambda right delta x if you want if for the interference the we should have the constant phase difference so against to constant phase difference we should have the constant path difference then and then things are going to get nullified and it means that light the two sources right okay that the polar the two waves that are getting interfered from the specific point should have the constant phase difference and they are the current okay now what happens here see again we are going to come back the yds experiment now see the yds experiment is having the three kind of the arrangement first 
the distance d is very 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 less than the capital d in this case what happens the light the light that is getting suppose p is the point of interference right suppose here the light is getting interfered at the very specific point okay light is getting in <coughs> the light is getting interfered at a very specific point right they are almost parallel okay this x1 and this x2 right x1 and x2 right are parallel why they are parallel because the light has to travel the very long distance d is very 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 greater than small d so it means it has to travel the very see this three kind of the arrangement of the yds in which there is the highest possibility for a sum to come up into an examination right the first is this possibility the second stage that suppose again i am going to take right the two slits now the distance between the two slits is quite large d is measurable right d is measurable okay again i am going to take let's divide this into the different way okay p now this distance d is a distance between the two slits right and this side screen is kept again this is the distance between the slit and the screen right now what happens this d is measurable as compared to capital d so what happens whatever c suppose this is a p is a point of the interference right so here i told you all the first wave that is traveling the second wave that is traveling okay suppose this is angle theta then this is going to be d sin of theta the d sin of theta is going to be the path difference between the two waves it is going to be the path difference between the two waves right and at the distance screen the interference pattern is right we are going to observe at the distance screen the interference pattern right or uh, i'm not taking this as a screen right now okay other will get confused okay for this now suppose we are taking the third possibility okay we are taking the third possibility the third possibility states that the d is also appropriate this is also nice okay like this way the interference pattern is obtained right this is theta this is theta like this way the interference pattern is obtained okay so there are the three possibilities okay there are three possibilities in which in many of the resources there are lots of confusion okay they are explaining through this right and giving and analyzing the pattern of third case okay so it matters okay in maximum number of the resources whatever they are saying right maximum number of the resources whatever they are saying right okay explaining from this point of view and whenever they reach up to the patterns and maximas and minimas right then they immediately take this approach okay they will explain you entirely this thing how the interference will go on how maximum and minimum will obtain but whenever when we are going to analyze the pattern and the fringe width immediately they jump off to this kind of the conclusions right so all of those time optics appears quite difficult for the maximum number of the students but the actual reason behind is something else okay now whatever the interference points we are having is because of those interference points right again i'm going to understand this concept right and now we are going to move on for the at what point the constructive interference is obtained at what point the 
destructive interference we are going to have. <coughs> at what point the constructive interference we are going to have, at what point the destructive interference we are going to have. see now. Okay, first point. Again, I am going to take two slits. Okay, this is the distance between two slits, right? And this side we are having the screen. Right? And this capital D is the distance between the screen and the slits. Okay, now see what happens. Right? Okay, see, two sores are coming. This is all of those common things that is going on. Right? All of those common things. Now see where two possibilities are there. First, appearance of the constructive interference. Appearance of the constructive interference. Appearance of the destructive interference. Right. Wherever I told you all, two friends meeting at the common point P. Right. They plan. I told you all. One is coming like this way, second is coming from the distance play. One is traveling like this way, second is traveling like this way. There exists a constant phase difference and the part difference between them. The phase difference is phi and the part difference is what? D sin theta. I told you all. But what happens here? Two possibilities we have seen into the previous lecture. There is a possibility that he may arrive one cycle late, two cycle late, three cycles late, four cycles late. Cycles, it means wavelength, the length of the wave. Here, there is a possibility this may arrive, this may, this or this may arrive one cycle, two cycle, three cycles late. Or here we are having the possibility he may arrive one cycle, two cycle late and early. It is also late and early. The second possibility is what either of them may arrive late or early, but this time half cycles, one and half cycles, two half cycles like this way, like two and half, three and half like this way. So, three. so wherever we are having, right? the maximum part, wherever the path difference is going to be, right, m lambda, one cycles, two cycles, three cycles like that way, right, we are going to have the constructive interference and obviously, see, destructive interference, it doesn't mean that things are going to get completely nullified, no, the things are minimum. So, in case of the constructive interference, the bright fringes are formed. In case of the constructive interference, wherever the d sin theta that is, is equal to m lambda, the bright fringes are formed. And wherever the d sin theta that is equivalent to, right, n minus half of lambda, half cycle, one cycle, two cycle, like that, right, okay, then they at that position, right, the dark fringes are formed. So, interference pattern, right, contains the combination of dark and bright fringes. The interference pattern contains the combination of the dark and bright fringes. Right? It contains the combination of the dark and bright fringes. Okay. So, one thing is for sure. Bright fringes, dark fringes. When d sin theta that is equivalent to m lambda, then we are having the... Now, we are considering the case. Right? If you want to note this down, you can just note this down because now we are moving forward to the actual case, right? The case that tells us if the separation between the slit is very large, if the separation between the slit is very, very, very large, <coughs> okay? Slowly, slowly, first of all, I told you all the interference pattern, two waves are going to collide, interfere at point. Then I told you all the intensity, what happens at the interference point. Then I moved on to, as because of constructive and destructive, the dark and the bright fringes are formed. Now, we are going to locate the dark and bright fringes. Suppose if we are considering, right, this is a screen, okay. Now see, in many of the resources to understand this concept immediately, they have taken the third case. Immediately. Right. Okay. This side we are having the two slits. 
this is a small d distance between the two slits and this distance is taken as d okay now wherever we are having the constructive interference right okay see as of this interference what happens first of all a uh, one large bright fringe is obtained in the mid part that is known as central maxima that is known as central maxima this appears to be quite large bright if you want to see this right we have seen into the simulation right if you want to analyze this we have seen into c this is one dark bright fringe at the mid between this is known as central maxima right this is known as what central maxima this is known as what central maxima okay now what happens here okay again we are going to come back to the simple point right okay above central maxima there comes first order minima central maxima is all the time a reference it is taken all the time it is zero all the time okay we are about to locate the dark and bright fringes right all the time it is taken as a reference point now above that right we are going to have the first order minima this will be the first dark fringe and the pattern appears to the both of the side this is also dark this is also dark this is but plus 1 this is minus 1 the first dark fringe in the either side of the first dark fringe again that appears one this is known as first order maxima right where we are going to take n as one right we are going to take n as 1 okay so can i say this is the location of the first dark fringe this is a central maxima this is the location of the first bright fringe on the opposite side again here comes the concept of the dark fringes the second order minima second order minima the first order minima and second order minima again here comes the dark but slowly 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 when we are moving away from the central maxima on the opposite side right on the either side the fringes are getting blur right so i'm moving aside if i just note this down you can come on everyone okay i'm moving aside now what will be first of all let's identify the location right suppose i am taking right if this is the angle this is the location of the nth fringe right and this is the d if i am taking this is theta right can i consider sin theta that is equivalent to tan of theta that is equivalent to right okay theta that is equivalent to y by d okay so bright fringes right we took d sin of theta that is is equal to n lambda so d y by capital d that is is equal to n lambda so location of the bright fringes completely depend on n lambda capital d by small d this is how you are going to locate the central maxima the first min maxima the second maxima the third order maxima like that way on the opposite side for the dark fringes right d sin of theta that was is equal to n minus half of lambda 
right so can i say the dy by capital d that is is equal to n minus half of lambda so simply if i want to define the location of the dark fringes then it is is equal to n minus half of lambda capital d whole divided by small d the equation number 1 and this is the equation number 2 this is the most important part what will be the fringe width you are going to identify the fringe width na okay suppose if i am going to move forward right these are going to be the quite helpful things into the ydsc experiment because from now right we are going to see one sum one to two minus some sums based on the ydsc experiment okay fringe width central maxima the first minima first maxima right the first maxima starts on y of n this is y of n plus 1 so can i say beta that is is equal to fringe width that is is equal to y of n plus 1 minus y of n so can i say that n plus 1 right lambda of capital d by small d minus n of lambda d by d so fringe width is going to come upon as n uh not n right fringe width is going to come upon as lambda d by d okay so these are the most important conclusions that we are about to have i'm moving aside for the 10 seconds if you want to just note this down come on everyone Okay, so this is all the YDSC experiment is all about, right? The constructive interference, the destructive interference. Okay, where n is the order maxima of the screen, right? Let's see some of the sums based on the YDSC experiment, right? <laughs> a monochromatic light of the wavelength 3000 am strong it is used into the ydse experiment the monochromatic light of the wavelength 3000 am strong it is used into the ydse experiment the distance between the two slits is 3 mm the distance between the slit and the screen is 1 meter so they are uh, telling us to calculate some stuff the first thing they are telling us to calculate the fringe width so directly we are going to apply fringe width beta that is is equal to lambda capital d by small d lambda that is is equal to 3000 into 10 to the power minus 10 1 whole divided by 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 right so beta that is going to be 3 into 10 to the power minus 7 whole divided by 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. So the fringe width it is going to come upon as right uh, 10 to the power of minus 4 mm. Okay, 10 to the power minus 4 mm. This will be the fringe width. <laughs> okay this will be the fringe width second they are calculating they are about to cal calculate the location of first dark right and second bright first dark location of first dark 
दैट इज इज इक्वल टू एन माइनस हाफ लैमड़ा कैपिटल डी बाई स्मॉल डी राइट सो दिस इज गोइंग टू इफ आई कीपिंग एन एस वन देन हाफ इंटू थ्री इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस सेवन इंटू वन होल डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस थ्री ना दिस इज द फ्रिंज विथ ओके टेन टू दावर माइनस फोर सो इट इज पॉइंट फाइव इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस फोर मीटर राइट द फर्स्ट डार्क विल कम अपॉन एज राइट फाइव इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस फाइव मीटर दिस विल बी द लोकेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट डार्क सेकेंड ब्राइट लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द सेकेंड ब्राइट ओके सो दिस विल बी एन लेमड़ा कैपिटल डी बाई डी दिस इज अ फ्रिंज विथ राइट दिस इज अ सेकेंड ब्राइट सो दिस इज टू इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस फोर दिस इज द लोकेशन ऑफ द सेकेंड ब्राइट फ्रिंज ओके यू कैन सी right if this is a central maxima this is the first minima and this will be the dark and somewhere here right the second bright fringe will come that is at the distance of how much right this is at the how much 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter like this calculations move on second question on yds experiment suppose in ydc question states that entire ydsc experiment is immersed in water of refractive index Four by three. Then what will be the new fringe width? And this thing, this kind of the questions are also coming up into an examination. The entire YDS experiment is immersed into the water. So the fringe width of the medium that is is equal to fringe width into the air. Whole divided by the refractive index of the medium. This is the actual formula that we are going to use. Okay. This is the actual formula that we are going to use. Right. Now, what will be the solution? Okay, I am going to keep on that AC again. Right. so can i say that refractive index of the fringe width into the medium that is is equal to lambda d by d into mu right same data we are going to take we are going to take lambda as 3000 m strong right capital d we are going to take it as 1 meter small d we are going to take it as 3 mm right okay so this will be lambda Three into ten to the power minus seven. That is is equal to d one mm. Three into ten to the power minus three. Refractive index is four by three, right? So it is three by four into ten to the power minus four, right? The new fringe width into the medium it will be seven point five into ten to the power minus five meter. Okay, this will be the new fringe width when this experiment is immersed into the water. in the yd experiment ydse now this third kind of the questions are coming up into an examination okay apart from this the shifting is also there but that shifting is we are going to see into the pyqs okay because into this lecture this much is enough now suppose if we are conducting the two experiment the first ydse experiment conducted in which the lambda one was used as 3000 m strong the second that was conducted it was The lambda that is used is five thousand m strong. Okay, d is same three mm. Capital D is one meter. D is same three mm. Capital one meter. Now the question states that 
सपोज here the wavelength is used as lambda 1 here the wavelength is used as lambda 2 now the question states that first bright of experiment it merges with right second dark for first experiment whatever the first bright fringe that is appearing on this side merges with second dark the location of the first bright fringe the terminology is location of first bright of first is equivalent to location of second dark then what will be the lambda by lambda 1 to ratio used lambda 1 by lambda 2 ratio used right now again first bright n lambda d by d that is is equal to n minus half this is lambda 1 right n minus half lambda d by d this is lambda 2 d d d is going to get cancelled n1 lambda 1 that is is equal to n2 minus half right lambda 2 n1 is first bright so that is lambda 1 n2 is second dark 2 minus half that is lambda 2 right okay so lambda 1 by lambda 2 that is going to be three by 2 so lambda 1 is to lambda 2 ratio that is going to be 3 is to okay so this is how ydsc experiments right they used to merge they used to ask fringe width they you ask the they used to ask location they used to ask the questions from the ratios they used to dip into the experiment okay they used to dip into the experiment and ask the ratios lots of things are there okay so i think this was all about the yds experiment okay i think that much is enough for today even the presentation slide is also over so i think guys as usual i'll be waiting for all of your feedbacks beneath the video i think it's time to go Right guys, it's time to go. So guys, this is Indrajit Singh. I will be waiting for all of your feedbacks beneath the video. This is Indrajit Singh signing off from the desk. Bye bye. Sat Sri Akal and Namaste from my side, Bacha ji. Okay, YDSA experiment, we tried to convert it, we used it, but it's okay. So this is Indrajit Singh signing off from the desk. Bye bye. Sat Sri Akal and Namaste from my side. Bye everyone. Stay at home, stay safe, stay healthy images. Bye Bacha ji.